Are you suffering from pain in your knee? You might be thinking about having an injection, but you don't know which type of injection is best. Hi guys, it's Dr. Adam here. I'm an orthopedic surgeon. In this video, I'm going to run through three of the most common injections used to treat knee arthritis, steroids, hyaluronic acid, and platelet-rich plasma, or PRP. I'll run through what these injections are, how they work, how effective they are, and some of the studies comparing them, which you might find surprising. As always, this video is for information purposes only, and you should speak to your doctor before making any decisions about your care. Just briefly, before we talk about the actual injections, the first question you probably have is when should you have an injection done? Osteoarthritis is a progressive condition where the cartilage on the ends of the bones is worn away and this ranges from mild wear and tear through to bone on bone arthritis where there's literally no cartilage left. At some point in this journey you might think about an injection but something I always tell people at any stage is to still try hard with weight loss, physiotherapy and exercise alongside having any injection as these can make a massive difference to your pain. And also that if you have advanced arthritis, it's not to say that you shouldn't have an injection, but you just need to be aware that the effect is unlikely to last for very long. So first up, we have steroids. Steroid injections have been around for years and are really commonly used. They're often seen as the benchmark against which other injections are compared. There are different types of steroids, for example, hydrocortisone, triamcinolone, depamedrone, they all act to reduce inflammation in the knee and dampen down the local immune response, which helps to reduce pain. Steroids are given as an injection into the knee, usually mixed with some local anaesthetic. And as with all injections, this may either be using a landmark technique where the surgeon will feel structures around the knee to know where to inject, or using ultrasound guidance, which is a more accurate way to know for sure that the injection is in the right place. So, how long do steroid injections work for? For most people with knee arthritis, they typically give pain relief for two or three months, but this is variable, and some people find they barely work at all, but others find it helps them for up to a year. Usually the first injection is the most effective, and subsequent injections are less effective. Although they're only a temporary measure, they can be really helpful to give a window of time when the knee pain is better, this will allow you to really engage with physiotherapy and exercise to build up the muscle strength in your knee, which will in turn help alleviate the pain. Are there any risks of steroids? Well, with any injection, there is a small risk of infection. And as I explained in my other video, you should definitely not have a steroid injection within three to six months of knee replacement, as it significantly increases the risk of infection. There's also some evidence that steroids can cause accelerated damage to cartilage and the bony architecture around the knee. So although they give short-term pain relief, it may actually make the arthritis or loss of cartilage in the knee worse. In this randomized control trial published in the Journal of the American Medical Association, the authors looked at 140 people randomized to either steroid injections or saline over two years they measured their cartilage thickness using MRI and pain scores. Surprisingly, there was no difference in pain scores at follow-up, but the cartilage thinned out faster in the steroid group. Now, for people with advanced arthritis using steroids as a last resort before knee replacement, this may be less important, as they've already lost most of their cartilage anyway, but it does make me anxious about giving steroids to those with early arthritis. Other risks of steroids include a temporary flare of symptoms for a few days and changes in the skin such as dimpling and the change in colour of the skin where it is injected. So, should you have a steroid injection? Well, they aren't without risks, but they're readily available and in my experience they do usually provide meaningful relief of symptoms. But if you're needing more than three injections, you need to have a serious chat with your doctor about whether other treatment options, including surgery, may be more appropriate. The next option is hyaluronic acid. Hyaluronic acid is a naturally occurring substance found in synovial fluid in the knee joint, where it acts as a lubricant, a bit like engine oil for the knee. When injected, hyaluronic acid can help alleviate pain by altering the viscosity of the synovial fluid. 
and it also increases the body's own production of natural hyaluronic acid, so reduces the progression of arthritis. So is it better than a steroid injection? Well, this randomised control trial published in the Journal of Bone and Joint Surgery compared people with knee arthritis receiving either steroids or hyaluronic acid. There was a similar improvement between the two groups in terms of pain, knee function and range of motion at six months. However, other studies suggest that hyaluronic acid can give longer term pain relief than steroids. And finally, we have PRP or platelet rich plasma. This is a concentrated solution of the patient's own platelets, which has been shown in randomised control trials to reduce pain and slow the progression of arthritis. So what is PRP? If we separate out the different components of blood, it contains a liquid portion known as plasma and cells which include red blood cells, white blood cells and platelets. Platelets contain lots of growth factors and are involved in tissue healing. The idea behind PRP is to concentrate the platelets and inject them into areas of damage to promote healing. PRP has been used for lots of different things, from tendonitis to bursitis to hair growth, as well as in the treatment of arthritis. To make PRP, the first step is to take a sample of your blood and put this in a centrifuge, which spins it down really quickly so that the heavier red blood cells sink to the bottom and the plasma can then be siphoned off the top. The platelet-rich plasma is then isolated and injected under sterile conditions into the affected part of your body. PRP has been shown to reduce levels of inflammatory cytokines and improve pain, but how does it compare to hyaluronic acid? In this meta-analysis of trials, platelet-rich plasma was found to be more effective than hyaluronic acid in both short and long-term pain relief and functional improvement, and there was no increase in side effects. So how about combining the two? Well, recent studies have shown this may actually be the most effective form of injection, as hyaluronic acid and PRP work through different mechanisms. In this systematic review in the American Journal of Sports Medicine, combination therapy with PRP and hyaluronic acid improved patient-reported outcome measures and was found to be better than hyaluronic acid alone. So, should everyone get a PRP injection as the first line of treatment? Well, not necessarily. An important consideration is cost. If you're paying for it out of pocket, PRP costs on average $700 and may not be covered through insurance. Hyaluronic acid is often covered by insurance for knee arthritis, so it makes sense to try this first. Another consideration is medical conditions you may have. If you take antiplatelet agents such as clopidogrel for cardiovascular disease, your doctor may say PRP is not advisable as you need to discontinue these medications, which has a risk associated with it. If you take non-steroidal anti-inflammatory agents, for conditions such as rheumatoid arthritis, these can also affect platelet function and interfere with the PRP therapy. Hyaluronic acid has a slight risk of allergic reaction, whereas PRP is literally taken from your own body, so it's safer in that regard. However, PRP does have higher rates of post-injection pain, swelling and soreness due to the local inflammatory response it triggers. Pressure on the knee can also affect platelet activation and reduce the effect of the injection, so your doctor may sometimes advise you to limit your activity after PRP injection, but this restriction doesn't apply to hyaluronic acid. Other reasons why PRP may not be advisable is if you have cancer, an active infection, unstable angina, or a blood disorder such as anemia or severe hypovolemia, which is low blood volume. To be a good candidate for PRP, you also need to have normal platelet function, which means that platelet disorders disqualify you from getting PRP treatment. So there are lots of things to consider, and each of the injections has pros and cons, so it's worth talking this through carefully with your doctor. I hope you find this helpful, and please remember to hit subscribe for more videos coming up soon.